Hi, I'm Ev Hales and I'm painting figures on the move for you today in this watercolour demonstration. I'm going to create a framework for the action. I'm adding bright accents in red and then painting a pattern of dark marks. There'll be a little more detail on the buildings and I will use posture and gesture to suggest movement on the figures themselves. The most important thing is going to be how I use and hold my brush to get a variety of fresh but not careless brush marks. The base wash suggests a building and a pathway and the red accents are dots and dashes of red that are on the people's clothing, window boxes, on the wall, on signage. They're just a pattern of red marks through the picture that travel your eye. Simply dots, dashes and lines, but they have an energy of their own. Once those reds are dry, I'm going to start painting a pattern of dark. And this time I'm starting with one of the main figures. And I'm just painting the dark areas. I'm not painting the whole figure. You'll notice how I'm using the brush carefully to suggest a leg. I'm breaking it if there's a knee in it. I'm looking at what other darks are on a figure. Maybe the strap of a bag. It might be the pants might be the hair, might be the jacket, but notice how the brush is literally dancing across the paper. It's held quite loosely in my hand, whether I'm using it as a tip or whether I'm laying it almost on the side. Sometimes the edge forms a white shape in front of it and that is the careful use of the brush. When I first start, all my marks are dry and I might decide that they're all getting a bit too much the same. And so with a little bit of water, I might soften some of those edges away to add interest and variety. It's still early to tell what the figures are actually doing. I'm not thinking about them other than where the darks happen. In this instance, the dark hair is putting the head slumped forward on this figure, indicating someone with a bent back leaning forward. He's a little bit tired and so the head is not upright on his shoulders. This person, however, is a much sparkier person and her head is sitting very directly above her shoulders. And that helps gives up, give us posture and gesture by varying where the head sits and how it is held. You'll also notice that I'm a bit careful about the feet. I don't paint them very often. I tend to put a little bit of shadow at the base because it's very easy to make the feet too large and then they look awkward and they hold the figure onto the ground and they don't let it move quickly across the scene. But what is important for movement is the angle of the limbs. Where they're bent, if they're bent at the knee or if they're at full stride. And this helps give a suggestion of movement. And a fast broken mark is another good way to give movement on the figure. I'm trying to work out the best way to use the brush to make these window panes. And I'm not resorting to a square brush because that would be too regular. Instead, I'm using the brush on the side and just indicating the pattern of those um, multi-paned glass. 
Once I've got enough to tell the story, then I look for something different to do in the rest of the window. Otherwise it would look very square and very monotonous. This way I'm going to put a figure just in front and change the pattern. Once you've established a pattern for anything, then look at how you can vary it. I'm giving you lots of clues here. As we go from one level in the, in the landscape or the cityscape up to the next, I'm going via what could be a light here and just the dark bits. And now I'm into the windows at the top, on the top level. And these are very regular and ordered. So I'm going to be very conscious about what I can do that is different in each one. In this one, by painting just the dark shapes in the window itself, I'm suggesting a curtain and I'm also showing the white frame that is dividing the window into four. It actually could be French doors or something. Um, but those pat that pattern of dark actually tells the story about the window frames and also the fact that it's got a curtain behind it. And here I'm just indicating the shutters. A few little dots and dashes to get from one spot to the next. And here you'll notice I'm holding the brush almost flat to the page and just leaning the back edge of it so that I get a mark that is not too repetitive and not too structured. It's got a bit of informality to it. And that adds interest for the viewer. I could use a square brush here, but it would be very stiff and I prefer using the brush on its side and just getting an impression of what I'm after. In each window I look for something different to do. There's no light next to this one. There's a lovely dark under the window, whereas on the one next to it the, the dark mark is on the top of the shadow, not on the bottom. And so I'm building variety into all of this. Now I'm painting shapes, not objects, and I'm dropping the brush from the top to the bottom. And you'll see at other times during this process, I will start at the base and pull the brush up when I'm painting the shutters. And that way I'm building accent whether I want it at the top or whether I want it at the bottom. The accent is, be accent is being created by the way the brush is being used. The story to this painting is that Jeanette, our tour guide, when we were in Italy on our painting trip, was leading us all out of the village back to the bus and we were all following her like Brown's cows and I actually called it um, Matilda leading the pack. And I've tried here to get different characteristics into the different people so that we have an interesting group walking along. And this guy's too small, he's too skinny, and so I'm going to lengthen his legs and I'm going to fatten his jacket and make him much more solid. And see how I've left a little bit of light there which looks like his hand is behind his back by just leaving a section unpainted. A few marks like braces and a little bit of different colour on this shirt is a good way to add interest in your picture. And I'm going to introduce some cerulean a little later into this 
and that will add a coolness in amongst the warmth of the walls and the red on the jackets and the, and the backpacks. I'm still not painting faces. In fact, that will become one of the last things that I do. I'm changing to a square brush here and this is giving me the regularity and informality and because it's going over a background wash it doesn't look too the same. I'm hinting at the panes of glass here and carrying it up from one floor to the next some of which you'll see in the wall that's further away and you see less as it comes closer because of the diminishing perspective lines on the building itself. The distance is indicated by the taller windows close to the right hand border of the painting. Putting the blue into the windows I need to add a little bit of it onto the wall and I'll throw a bit into the shadow area um, near where the wall diminishes round the corner and that will carry that colour through. Some lovely deep green shutters adds another value and diminishes some of the impact of some of the strong dark and makes it a more even mid-dark tone. I'm not fussy here with what I'm doing. I don't mind if they're a little bit wobbly. I want the rhythm and this is where I'm using the brush from the bottom up so that the base of the shutter is darker and accents it onto the little ridge on the wall rather than having a really really strong top section to those shutters. Now throwing some shadow at the diminishing corner and it gives an interesting colour over that warm wall, pulling the two colours together and pushing the corner wall on the left forward at the same time. I'm going to drop the level of the wall a little and I'm using the point of the brush, of the square brush, to, to do that rather than doing a horizontal mark all the way across. That way I can carry some of the dark up the wall and reinforce the shadow on the wall itself. You'll notice when I want to scumble some of this I'll take the brush from its regular edge and just use it on the side and just sort of caress the paper and develop a slightly informal mark. not very much to go just fine-tuning a few sections reinforcing the base of the building and I'll play a little bit on the footpath as well as on this right hand edge which will jump out once it's framed up if I don't put a little bit of tone there And I still haven't done their heads or their arms. Um. 
I'm going to change brush in a moment and this is a rigger to give me a few lines of the, of the different um, cobblestoning that's on the footpath and when that's first finished it looks a little bit too stuck on and so you'll see me change brush again this time for just a damp hake to take some of that regularity out of those marks leaving just enough to tell the story just fine tune that perspective line a little bit that wasn't quite right and we're just about there you'll notice what a difference it makes when I just put a bit of skin tone in and a few arms and a few more, more verticals down the wall to add interest and a little bit of energy in the final piece. So the process was leaving a few white shapes for the windows and the figures, adding a little bit of shadow and then the bright red accents done early so they retain their clarity. Then a pattern of dark to carry your eye through the painting. Then some mid-tones in cerulean as an alternate colour. And finally a deeper tone to anchor and a few faces and arms to give the figures a bit more energy in their movement. The most important lesson is how I hold and use the brush to make significant marks without doing a lot. If you want to find out more, come and visit me at my website, www.evhalestuition.com.